Hello, so I want to briefly, briefly as possible, talk about um, interrelationships. Some of you are going, what? What is that? Interrelationships is this idea of the connections between various things, people, entities, etc., and trying to understand. Nora Bateson is the daughter of world famous Gregory Bateson, who, if you don't know who that is, let me let me sum up Gregory Bateson in Jen's terms. Gregory Bateson uh, was number one genius. Number two, he what I like about him is the fact that he defied categories. He was in multiple disciplines, and oftentimes when a particular discipline would try to sort of hem him into a corner. Um, because they wanted to have him conform to the way we're supposed to evaluate things in this genre, uh, he would kind of defy that. And um, I think that's part of where his genius lies, in that he would step outside of a particular bias in a field and bring in what he knew from other disciplines and other perspectives, and, and in so doing, um, come up with a creative solution to stuff. Uh, but sometimes he would he gets accused often of ha not having finished projects in various areas because he would jump from field to field. I think largely because he was frustrated with being pushed into this little box, as happens in various disciplines. So, and all that to say, uh, Nora Bates and his daughter uh, founded the Bateson Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. In, she's a filmmaker by, by trade. And is... You know, she had to actually, didn't have to, she chose to make a film about her dad. And she said one of um, the most difficult things about doing this was as a filmmaker, when you choose um, a particular angle, particular perspective, or you cover something, by default, you're eliminating 360 degrees out here that you didn't include. And so there's this inherent bias in narrowing things in a particular direction. And that itself is going to is going to shape uh the perspective that's created. So she founded the Bateson Institute and what some of the work they're doing is aimed at balancing out how there's a lot of research in the world that is, I mean, the majority, I would guess, of the research that's done is focused on breaking things down into smaller and smaller pieces. This is what happens in science. This is what happens in medicine. Um, we have more specialization. And in doing that, I mean, while that is helpful to a certain extent, if we don't ever swing to the other end where we put things back together, we lose perspective. I mean, the cliche is true in that we can't see the forest for the trees. We, and the same, another cliche, this is just a cliched video here, guys, would be that, that idea that to everything, to a hammer, everything is a nail. There can be this narrowing of our perspective in a particular direction where we, we get good at that and then can't step out of it. So, all that to say, this idea of um, the, uh, trying to understand the interrelationships between various things is important. And I think we can take this, um, this idea, basically, so what's happening in Sweden, as far as I understand, is that they're um, taking various uh, researchers in, di in different disciplines, maybe not even researchers, right? They're taking a spiritual person and a psychiatrist and an um, anthropologist and an ecologist and putting them together to solve, creatively solve problems, which I think is actually amazing. And a, what a great concept. And I think we can apply the same concept to ourselves, to how we engage the world, such that we... Um, we try to step outside our own box and our own bias in order to, for self-growth, 
to solve problems, um, to just grow. Um, let me give you an example as to what I mean, right? So we all have our own unique inherent bias. Um, let me describe my exposure to my own bias, my own cultural bias. Um, when I was in college, I had the privilege of traveling to the subcontinent of India a couple of times, a couple of summers in a row. And really, I mean, growing up as a middle class white Anglo Saxon on the east coast of the United States in a burb of Washington, D.C., that had a particular set of, you know, biases. My perspective on the world was shaped by that. And what happens is when we step outside of our own and our own bias is absent, we start to actually recognize what those assumptions that we have actually are. So totally unaware of them. Right? I'm in college. I go to India where I'm going to serve the poorest of the poor. First of all, I have no idea what that is because that has not been my experience. And I am cleaning, sweeping the floors, mopping, clipping people's toenails, that sort of thing. In We volunteered at Mother Teresa's homes that are all over the world. You can actually, a lot of people don't realize this, but you can show up and say I want to volunteer for six weeks. And you will be in the way, and they will take you on, because they, the Sisters of Mercy value this opportunity for you to be exposed to serving the poorest of the poor. And you will learn from it, and it will change your perspective. And that was very much my experience. So, let me, but let me give you an example from the trip, beyond you know volunteering in a serving people that are dying. Um, towards the end of the trip, I was uh, in Howrah Station, which is this old British colonial hangover from the British colonial days, um, train station in Calcutta, India. I'm sitting waiting to take a, you know, a 20 hour train ride to Madras and I'm homesick. I've been gone for six weeks, something like that. I pull out this photo album that I've brought from home of my family, my dog, my yard, my house, I mean, my piano, whatever, like these things that I feel nostalgic about, and I'm look. I'm flipping through this this album. Within probably ten to fifteen seconds of me pulling this out of my backpack, there are probably twenty five, thirty Indian men that are all looking over my shoulder at my album at the same time. In my perceived personal space. At the time, of course, I'm annoyed. I'm just, you know, quite peeved. But it's not till I get home and have to write the paper for the professor to talk about the summer and my experiences in, in a, the developing world where I start to realize, wait, this is this is my set of assumptions. I've assumed that a three foot birth around me is what I'm entitled to. It's my right. It is the way it is in my Western United States experience. And um, growing up. But I start to realize when it's absent that that's not the case necessarily the rest of the world. I mean, in particular in India, that's not something that's assumed. And the first fit place you want to go, of course, is to assume that it is wrong, that the other experience, the one that's not your own, that clearly that's the wrong one, and mine is the right default position as it should be. Even when there's no morality associated with this, I mean, who cares, right? It's a cultural thing. I have assumed, though, that because my default experience was you grew up with a three-foot birth around you. 
that that's the way it should be everywhere. And then when it's not there, I assume they're wrong, because that's typically how we want to react. My encouragement to those of you that follow this channel, to anybody watching this video, is that to the extent that we can work on having experiences where we can step out of our own perspective and try on the perspective of others, not just other people, but even other living things, to the ex it will be will correlate with our ability to inform our own worldview to change and transform it and grow with it and to become more self-aware of our own blind spots, of our own assumptions, even just knowing, right? I, I've met plenty of people that assume certain things are just how it is when in fact they're just cultural assumptions. Um, and that limits us. I would say our growth and our development as human beings can correlate with how often we try to expose ourselves to, to other perspectives, to step outside our own. I mean, this is what we do when we read a book. It's a different perspective. This is what we do when we travel. This is part of the reason I love traveling. So you get the shock of, wait, things are different here. Not not in the way that I assume them to be. Um, this is the point of a film. This is the point of so many experiences that we have in life. If we just embrace this idea of trying to see our own perspective and change and transform it and understand this, this connection to the whole, I think this is the path to to growth, to self-development, and to the extent that we can do that, I think that correlates with how, how much we get to, to change and to step into being really unique, develop, well-developed people on the planet that can, that can shape and change and give something amazing during our lifetimes. So thanks for tuning in. Adio.